and welcome to the um, first lesson in uh, module three. Um, we're going to kind of continue looking at some of the stuff we started looking at in module two, dealing with quadratics um, and all that. So um, today specifically, we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations um, and um, with one method called the zero product property. And that's going to be kind of our place where we'll stick with for this lesson. So um, let's get into it here. Um, so we're looking at this opening exercise here, it asks us to consider the equation a times b times c times d equals zero. What values a of a, b, c, and d would make the equation true? So <clears throat> that's a lot of variables there, okay? And there's a lot of options. But the biggest thing we wanna focus on here is that we have a product of four things and that product is zero. Now think about the ways that you can multiply numbers together and get zero. So any time that you want a product to be equal to zero, you need to multiply by zero in the first place. So in other words, A, B, C, or D would have to be zero. One of those four would have to be zero. So we could say like A equals zero, or B equals zero, or C equals zero, or D equals zero. <clears throat> They don't all have to be zero. It only takes one of them, right, in order for then the equation to be equal, to be true. So then if A was zero, for example, then B could be like two, C could be 10, and D could be like negative 312 if we wanted to. Um, but ultimately we need one of these four variables to be equal to zero in order for the equation to be true. <clears throat> Okay, and that takes us then to this idea of the zero product property. So, um, find values of C and D that satisfy each of the following equations, there may be more than one correct answer. So let's take a look here. So again, we have a product, C times D equals zero. So what must be true? Either C equals zero or D has to equal zero. Again, it doesn't have to be both, just one of those two has to be equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, here, and number two, um, this one here, we have C minus five times D equals two. Now granted here, there may be more than one correct answer, okay? So um, in this case, right, we can um, just kind of guess and check almost what numbers, you know, would then make this inequality true, or sorry, equation true. Um, again, there may be more than one correct answer. So let's think about this here. Um, let's maybe make life easy for ourselves and let's let C be like seven. So if c is seven, now we have seven minus five times d equals two. Seven minus five is two times d equals two. And we can just divide both sides by two and we get d equals one. And so there's a situation where c and d both result then in making this equation true. Okay, and of course there's lots of options here. You could make c whatever you want. You could make c equal, um, I don't know, six for example. And then it would be six minus five times D equals two. Six minus five is one times D equals two, so D would just be two in that case. And again, lots of options. Okay, let's keep going here. So we'll do these last two and then we'll stop the video. Um, now we have C minus five times D equals zero. <clears throat> okay, so now we're equal to zero, right? And so, um, before, right, um, you know, and again, we can kind of just pick whatever value you want for C, uh, you know, so we can make C be like, I don't know, six again. So then it would be six minus five times D equals zero. So six minus five is one times D equals zero. So D would just be zero, okay? And that would be, you know, one possible set of answers here. But truly here, since we have a product of two things, we could just say that C minus five is equal to zero or D has to equal zero here. These two things are multiplying to give us um, zero, right? And so just set one, each one equal to zero. So C equals five, that would guarantee that this is equal to zero or D equal to zero would also guarantee that this equation over here is equal to zero. And it doesn't matter. So if once C is five, you can have D be whatever you want. Or once D is zero, you can have C be whatever you want. All right, and number four in a similar fashion here. We have two things multiplied together. They both multiply and give us zero. So that means either C minus five has to equal zero or D plus three has to equal zero. So C is five or D is negative three if you just solve those individual equations. 
So again, as long as one of those two things are true, you'll, make, you'll guarantee that your equation is equal to zero. All right, we'll stop right there, and in the next uh, video, we'll get into some of these examples here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on here. Just one last thing. So this is called the zero product property, and let me just scroll down here to where the summary is. So the zero product property says that if a times b equals zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero, or both a and b are zero. Okay. When solving for the variable in a quadratic equation, rewrite the equation as a factored quadratic set equal to zero. Using the zero product property. You know that if one factor is equal to zero, then the product of all factors is equal to zero. All right. Going one step further, when you set each binomial factor equal to zero and have solved for the variable, all the possible solutions for this equation have been found. Given the context, some solutions may not be viable, so be sure to determine if each possible solution is appropriate for the problem. And that's more for like word problems. Sometimes you'll get answers that don't make sense. So for example, you might get an answer of like negative two, and if you're talking about time, well, negative time doesn't really make sense, right? We can't really go back in time, not yet at least. All right, anyway, um, we'll come back to this um, in the next video. Thanks guys, we'll see you next video.